triple XP. Welcome to Triple XP. This is episode nine. I am Shane, and this is Mike. Hello. And this week again, we are joined by the lovely Sarah. Hello. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and all the other important podcast places. On this week's episode, I give my views on the latest Destiny Two DLC. We talk the Mass Effect remaster. And finally, we discuss what to us value for money means in video games. But before we get into anything, how are you both? Pretty good. Really well. Excited. Excited about it being Friday. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's ne- always a fun day. Yes. It, it definitely is. And neither of you um, picked up new consoles this week. Well, I mean, Mike, obviously you didn't pick up a ps5 because it's not out in the uk yet but yeah. sarah did you pick up a console this week neither did no, you say I... rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i didn't we were we were going to try to do the pre-order stuff but then we were like you know what at some point it's going to be less hectic trying to get it so we're just gonna wait completely reasonable i kind of uh, took the same approach i was just like i'll just wait for all the like madness about pre-orders and stuff to die down and then i'll just i'll just pick one up yeah, it's it's too it's too much of a stressful process to get something that I want it to be fun. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. I'm I mean I'm looking forward to mine. Um obviously as I say, UK suffering from a week's delay. So we don't get ours till Thursday, next Thursday the nineteenth. But um very excited for that. You all got uh, your, but you you all got your physical games though, didn't you? Yep, yeah, Valhalla really like... turned up. That's like a really unheard of thing. I've never seen it before where everyone's just getting their games. But no it's, it's not just games though, is it? Them. It's like uh, the controller, the camera, oh, the right, headset. Yeah. Um, you get all of them yesterday. Like all of the peripherals came early. And now everyone's just sitting waiting for the console to turn up. That's really <laughs> Which is, like you say, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, another, as, as always, a shout out to Boomerang because they have confirmed for me that they have sent Spider-Man and Demon Souls both on PS5. So I should be opening launch day with Valhalla, which I've had delivered, plus those two other titles, which will be extremely fun. Absolutely. Um, Boys. Absolute <laughs> heroes. Uh, but it's probably a good thing you did. You have I've waited, to be fair, because there's there's already been, although rare, there has been a few little niggles some people have reported couple of ps5s getting bricked and uh some xboxes that are having a weird error that involves lots of green dots on the screen all very odd stuff yeah i mean um this is kind of another reason why i stayed away from like day one it was like there's always those those issues with like first for you know first launch consoles so i've usually yeah, typically I'm... waited for like you know another batch of consoles to come out that have fixed that issue or whatever and I think with the amount of people that want pre-orders, I'm sure whatever factory is building them is under a lot of pressure. So a lot of things are going to go unchecked, um, not on purpose, but just because the demand is so high. So Yeah, human error. It's easily yeah. done, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm just a sucker for new technology and I can't hold myself back. I'm, I'm an idiot, basically. <laughs> I just can't, I would... I can't go. <laughs> I would have gotten one if I wasn't lazy, but I just didn't well, feel like, yeah, I just didn't feel like looking online. I was just like, yeah, yeah, I totally am going to wait because of all these other reasons. Not yeah. I'm not lazy. <laughs> I'm literally just like, oh, shiny, oh, shiny, oh, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> just can't is, control myself, which is 90% of my Twitter at the minute is everyone just like, oh my God, look at this. It's so shiny. <laughs> look, how, look how shiny it is. Um, but on the note of on the note of the consoles, uh, should we get into into the news for the week? Because there's a lot to talk about. 
Yeah, let's do it. So I don't know how much you guys have been keeping up with uh, the the reviews of the consoles. I'll be honest, this you week read... I have been dodging things like reviews and a lot of like the news and things on it because I just I want it to be like fresh when I pick up a console and like I want it to be like you know exciting. Yeah, I don't want to know what I'm getting. If, okay, if, if if that makes sense. Yeah. So what about you? Have you read much? Seen much? No, because I don't want to get jealous. <laughs> yeah, there's that as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's reasonable. Um, yeah, reasonable. Well, our blog writer, Ryan, did do a little piece on uh, two pieces, in fact, on uh, Xbox and PlayStation this week. So although we're going to go into a, a tiny piece now, um, for all our listeners, if you do want to read some more in-depth views, he has posted that for us, uh, for the team. And that went out on... Today? No, last Friday. Yeah. Is it last Friday? I mean, last I Friday. Technically, it's today as we record this, but when it comes out on the Monday, it'll be. No, no, that's oh, no, wrong. No, no. The yeah. day we record yeah, this, he went, the Destiny one went out. It was actual, actual, actual last Friday. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, whatever date that was, <laughs> the, the very beginning of the month. Um, <laughs> that's, so, I've got. That's one review I did um, catch up on, and it, it was it, it's a good read. It is a good read, and this is coming from um, someone he's... who likes a lot of pictures as well. So <laughs> he's done a he's done a solid job. He certainly has. Let's not let's not so... his ego while he's listening to this though. No, yeah, he doesn't deserve an ego boost. That's for sure. Yeah, he's <laughs> um, so I've got two articles here. Um, I've purposefully chose the same website to take these articles from. So I've I've chosen IGN. Um, that have both given their reviews. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article, obviously, because it's long and there's lots of detail in there and you've just specified that you don't want too much detail. <laughs> um, so <laughs> well, let's not do that. Um, but what I will basically just go through is the quick verdict at the end, give everyone uh, an understanding of how the consoles are reviewing at the moment. What I can say is both IGN, uh, IGN are giving both consoles an 8 out of 10. So they're both getting the exact same score. Um, they both appear to have downfalls in different areas and uh, qualities in other areas. So for the Xbox, I specifically chose the Series X. I didn't touch on the Series S too much, but I imagine, let's be honest, we want to talk about the best one. We're, high, we're a high-end podcast. We're going to talk about a high-end Yeah, console. exactly. Um, so the, the review basically states this. We can only assume that the Xbox Series X will wow us with new and spectacular next-gen games eventually, because there isn't much to judge it on right now. But in the meantime, no matter what current games you throw at it, your loading times will be drastically cut, your frame rates will be smoother, and your resolutions will be higher. This bold and minimalistically designed box is quite compact for both the power it packs and especially how it compares to the PS5, capable and loaded with convenient features like instantly resuming and cycling between any of your recently played games. Compared directly to the PlayStation 5 specs, it flat out gives you more power for the same price. It's going to be a joy to see what developers actually do with it in the coming years. So that's IGN's take on the Series X. I think that last sentence, in the coming years, is quite a big point for me personally on picking up that console. Is that yes, they've yeah. brought out Bethesda. Yes, they've got all these studios. You know, they've potentially got all these amazing games coming out. But when, you know, it's going to be years. Right. Yeah, and this is the thing, and this is what a lot, um, a lot of people that I've spoken to that have the console have said, um, it's great, it's fantastic, it clearly feels like an upgrade because everything's faster and everything feels much smoother, but there isn't anything right now to really showcase what the console can do because there isn't any core launch titles. Everything that's coming out on it right now is stuff that is currently coming out on the previous consoles or just is, wasn't built for the Series X. Yeah. Excuse me. The one, um, um, the one another, another takeaway from that was the quick resume is like probably its key feature at the minute. Yep. That I've seen. I mean, I watched um, Jedi, Carillion Jedi, who's you know, a co-host on this podcast. Uh, he he streamed, you know, day one launch of his console and 
Um, he was showing me like the quick resume and it's, you know, it's, it's a, less than a minute and you're jumping in. I mean, it's, it's less than that. It's, you know, it's sub 30 seconds probably. And you, you know, you from one game to another. And for me personally, that's kind of like dangerous because <laughs> I'll just uh -huh. like, I'll die and I'll just be like, right, new game. And then I'll just be <laughs> yeah. like straight into another game. It, it is extremely dangerous because also that time between games is when I'm texting my partner. That's when she knows I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no, if there's no yeah. loading times, she's yeah. never going to know I'm alive. <laughs> Relationships will be tested. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we did see some footage from uh, Alana Pierce earlier in the week as well. And she did a, a stream where she showed off the quick resume and uh, confirmed that it works with disc-based games as well, as long as the disc is in for the game. So she had The Witcher on disc, came out of that, loaded up Gears 5, and then quick resumed back to The Witcher because she hadn't taken the disc out and obviously then completely shut down the console, or shut down the game, sorry. It was able to quick resume back into the disc version as well, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that is, it is, it is really impressive, yeah. So just before we move on to um, the PlayStation 5 right out, uh, Ryan did bring an article to our attention just before we started recording uh, that basically says the Xbox Series X and S, 70% of owners have Game Pass. Now my question is, what are the other 30% doing with their lives? <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I, I guess like the only stuff that you can play, play right now is if you have, I don't know, they just want some shiny box? I don't know. Um, I think, Mike? I think like the, the other 30% of people are the people like me who just have an Xbox and it's just kind of sat there gathering a bit of dust. <laughs> yeah, but we're talking about Series X and S, so you'd have to have bought the brand new Xbox oh, but right, not okay. got Game Pass. Yeah, yeah so it's not okay. talking about old Xboxes. It's the brand new console, they've purchased the brand new console, but then for whatever absolutely crazy reason, they've gone, no, nah, I don't want Game Pass. <laughs> not for me, that. I don't want that. That, that like the key selling point of Xbox right now. No, I don't, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> I do, I, it blows my mind. I mean, each to their own. I'm not going to put anyone down for, for not wanting Game Pass, but it just doesn't make good financial sense to me. Yeah, I mean, why would you not get Game Pass and then, you know, be playing Banjo Kazooie on this high tech console? Exactly. Like 60 frames per second, you know, Banjo Kazooie, I'm there. Day one. What more do you want? That's it. That's, I'm so I'm going to go buy one now. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You sold it to me. Where all those ad adverts that Xbox had, all you had to say was Banjo Kazooie, and I would have been there. Banjo Kazooie day one. No loading exactly. times. I've never so, played that, and I have no idea what that is. Oh God. It, like, it's an N64 I mean, game originally. Oh, uh, I see. Next time you um you get you speak to Ed, ask him. He's a big Banjo Kazooie fan, oh, isn't yeah, he? That's I've true, watched yeah. definitely watched him play them. Yeah, okay. he's, he's played through a lot of them. Well, it's, it's about um, a bear and a bird, and it's just lovely. It's just a nice time. It is. It is just a just a nice. It's just a nice time, and you, <laughs> sometimes that's all we need from games. Just a nice time, not not horror and apocalyptic emotions. We just need a nice time. Um. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So you're right uh, mate. again. <laughs> Again, from okay. IGN, it just you touched me there. Um, maybe it's this this new mango pineapple rum I've got. It's this you know it's that doing things to me. Dangerous, tasty combo. It's, it is tasty combo as well, and it's doing things to me. Um, oh no, Google! I don't want to ask you a question. I know this is 2020. It's a weird year. Um, so anyway, moving on. So this article again, like I say, I, I took them both from IGN so that we would get a comparative verdict from both. So IGN stated for the PlayStation 5, with a launch lineup dominated by games that are also available on PS4 and on the back of a generation already punctuated with incrementally more powerful hardware revisions like the PS4 Pro, the PS5 doesn't quite land as a knockout punch yet, but it's definitely got the power and speed to be a real contender, although the jury's out on the stamina of that tiny 670, uh, 667 gigabyte SSD. However, while the PS5's well-considered UI and blisteringly quick loading times for PS5 games make it a pleasure to use, it's the DualSense controller that's proven to be the surprise haymaker I never saw coming. 
it truly leaves other controllers feeling primitive in comparison. So wow. that's the wrap for my GN. It's a rave, rave review for a controller. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The controller genuinely has taken everyone like by surprise in good ways. Um, I know we weren't going to talk super details, but did they, did they say like what of the controller is so good about it? Just like the feel of it or the com they, comfort levels? They do. Uh, there's actually a lot of information around the controller. Um, so they did a specific review just on the controller. And as you asked, I will, I'll, I'll quickly read that to you. It's not particularly long. So the verdict for the controller specifically. With the DualSense, Sony has both made a more comfortable gamepad for traditional gameplay and introduced some very exciting features. The haptics and adaptive triggers make an immediately noticeable difference in games that you make use of them, and they offer the exciting potential for new and interesting gameplay experiences. Except for battery life, which remains a weak point, the DualSense controller is everything you want it to be uh, to see in a next-gen upgrade. So I've seen a few people talk about it online and it's things like the way that the haptic vibrations work it's very 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 different to sort of the standard rumble that we're used to and a lot of people are make, saying that like, it's making them feel things that they weren't expecting to feel in their body <laughs> like oh, wow. it's it, it's unexplainable apparently until you can feel it yourself but they were like one one person i was listening to was saying that when they felt it, they physically threw the controller in the air because the, the sensation was so weird that they couldn't cope oh. with it at first. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm so excited then if they can do some cool stuff with like horror games. Yes. Oh, I'm in, especially it's if be you're using very VR. interesting. Yeah, for and me, this for me it's going to be shooters. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, I play a lot of horror games. <laughs> but think about, um, Sarah, because you, you've played Horizon, haven't you? Yes. Think about how Horizon could play with uh, when she's using her bow, an adaptive oh. trigger that actually feels like you're pulling. pulling you're like, it's getting tenser as you pull the trigger. And like if you're if you're fighting a thing and it's got electricity on it, then it, oh, that would be so cool. Yeah, there's some really good ideas that they could they could do with it. Um, and the other thing that I've I've heard a lot of people online saying is that although obviously you can get the Pulse 3D headset, the Sony specific one, that a lot of people are noticing humongous improvements in sound just with their normal headset because of the way that the console bounces the sound. I don't, I don't understand the technology behind it. I don't understand how it works. There was, but a, there was to, a huge Mark Cerny talk about it that nobody understood. Yeah, <laughs> but the way that it move sound around they've said it like it absolutely it just without those headset completely like re-energizes the way sound in video game works and so once with with really good headsets it's only going to get better see yeah. i just have some information about the controller i asked and it's my um yeah i watched um uh, a friend of our podcast Kira. All my information is making like oh. Oh, sorry, Sarah. You cut out them for a sec. It's just uh... oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want any information. Now I asked, and I knew I was gonna get jealous, and here I am getting all jelly pants. <laughs> I'll send you a picture of my wives on a uh, on Thursday. Okay. <laughs> um, there is some bad news on the PS5 front, though. So, as it stated in that verdict, the once you take out the operating system, that um, SSD drops down to 667 gigabytes of usable space. Now we know that a game like Modern Warfare is like 100, and what is it now, like 25 gig or something ridiculous. Mm. Um, so we know that's going to be problematic, but there's also, from what I've seen, a lot of people are saying that games are slightly smaller on the PS5 anyway. Um, obviously the way, the way they compact data is all better. There is a simple mm. fix to that huge Call of Duty install. Just Delete don't, it. Don't get it. Just don't install it. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't buy it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it's one of those things that, I mean, I know, for example, myself, I'm going to keep my PS4 and I'm ultimately going to use it as a VR machine and a machine to put all the games on it that aren't going to benefit from 
a P- from the PS5, so that they're not going to have an upgraded version. So I'll just play them on the PS4. I won't bother filling up my hard drive with pointless games. Yeah, yeah. That I play what like Overwatch for me isn't worth moving to the PS5. No, I'll just not. keep it on the PS4 and play yeah. it on that. Yeah, I will as well. Um, so, but I mean, the only real hit for the like the only real knock for that is that they have confirmed that the ex the expandable storage slot on the PS5 is not ready to go at launch. So the slot's there. You can buy, you go out and buy an SSD that fits it if you want, but the likelihood is it, it, well, it basically won't work. They haven't turned on that feature. They haven't got that ready to go. And they are, they've said that the reason is they want to test more SSDs that are currently um, out there to make sure that they are compatible with the PS5's infrastructure because obviously it's such a unique infrastructure they want to make sure that the ssd works correctly with it so that you, there's no problems further down the line yes yeah, so it's, it's essentially waiting for like third party ssd creators to kind of catch up or uh, yeah it's waiting for the both that. the ssds but also for them to do all the testing and yeah, put yeah. in the patches to make sure because obviously i imagine each ssd that's compatible will have its own patch that will make it work in the best way it can for the console um but that's that's not ready yet. But then at the end of the day, we're at the end of the year. I mean, who's going to be filling up that console in the next six months? Not many people, I'd imagine. You've yeah, got a bit of time. That's like game like, collectors, maybe. Achievement maybe, but then if they're, ga- if they're console collectors or game collectors, then probably like me, and they're not going to be getting rid of their PS4 straight away, or they're not going to be getting rid of their Xbox straight away. So they've got a bit of time. You can buy yourself yeah. some time by keeping your old console. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't see that as a massive issue myself because you know you run out of storage space, you delete something, don't you? It's not a massive deal. Exactly, and the way that with how quickly things load, obviously download doesn't speed up because that's internet based, but with how quickly things load and now how quickly things install in because the PlayStation doesn't have to do that horrendous five hour copy in time. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> now that that's gone. Um, you can download, play, delete games to your heart, heart's content. As long as your internet can keep up, you're all right. You're all good. Yeah. I, um, I have a question that's kind of related but unrelated. Why, why are people so quick to get rid of their old consoles? So I have all of my consoles starting with um, the NES. So I have like that, Sega Genesis, and everything from that to, to the top. But... Like, JB's like, as soon as I get the PS5, I'm okay with getting rid of the PS4. And I'm like, why wouldn't you want to keep it? Uh, I can't answer that question because, like you, I have everything from a Mega Drive right up to my current generation in my house. Um, a lot of them on display. Yeah, I have so, I have the yellow brick Game Boy. I have the Advance. I have the Color. Like, I would never get rid of that. So, I don't... It's a, there's, it's a Yeah. There's only three reasons I can think of, and might you might have different views to this, but the only things I can think of is A, um, to save space. They they don't have room to have more than one console, so they want to clear the space out, get rid of the old and bring in the new. Uh, B will be to save money if you're trading in your old console to get money off your new one. And then the third one, would just, just because you don't want it anymore and you want to do something nice. I know there were some people on Twitter. I know Alana Pierce again mentioning her. She was talking about donating old consoles to like hot, uh, hot children's hospitals and things like that. Um, outside of those three reasons, I can't see a reason to get rid of an old console. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Those are pretty good reasons, but I don't understand them. <laughs> and the third one is less of a reason to do it. It's more just what you should do if you do decide to get rid of it. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, I don't know. But anyway, Mike, should we uh, move on to the next story? Yeah, just I don't know, I a, a quick note on the controller. Just going back to that, is that the um, you know the haptic feedback, the, you know, the yes. feedback on the triggers, things like that. That's a very like next gen thing. It's the most next gen thing to come out of the consoles, in my opinion. Yep. But like, yeah. where does that leave um, game developers specifically in terms of like creating games? So you know, a third party game. We'll have to implement the haptic feedback, all that you know, that kind of sensory new input that you get with with PlayStation. But yeah, in terms of Xbox, they don't have any of that. So, well, they won't. A, they won't have to. There's no, 
there's no like requirement to have to use the haptics. Um, although you would hope that the every developer is going to want to use it to the best of their ability. If I remember rightly, if when we go back to it was either Cerny's talk or another Sony talk that happened earlier in the year, they spoke about how they had provided um, a lot of the developers with some specific like uh, techno- technology, technological calculations and shit and like certain things within the certain things within the controllers and within the sound that make it easier for developers to utilize those functions. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember the exact details, but I remember seeing something about it and I can't, I say, I can't remember if it was Sony, if it came from somewhere else, but that Sony had specifically made these features as accessible as possible for developers so that they weren't uh, onerous and they weren't going to become problematic for them to input them, especially like you say, when you've got a, a game like uh, say Call of Duty, just because we know it's on everything, for a game like Call of Duty that they're going to put that into the, the PlayStation version but not have it on the Xbox version, they wouldn't be difficult for them to do. Mm, I see. Yeah, but, but I mean if, if you, you know, if you've got both consoles and you know the <laughs> one game, because there will be one game down the line whether they choose to implement it or not, there will be some game that does. If you've got the choice yep. between the Xbox version and the PlayStation version, that's that's you know got all these extra features. You, I mean, you kind of, I mean, I would personally lean towards the one with the extra features. I suppose it depends on two things. Is it if it's a game where you're going to be playing with friends, in which case, which console are your friends getting it on? Or is it a game in which the haptics are going to make a real difference and the adaptive triggers are going to make a real difference? Um, I guess, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I feel like a lot more people play with friends on the Xbox from what it feels like, but I always go for a console that has more just games for me and not with other people. So I personally would probably just go for the one with the extra features for sure. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. I mean, yeah, it's kind of the same for me. Like, I'll I, I heavily favor like single player stories and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it kind of falls into the thought, isn't it? It's just yeah, definitely, and it kind of falls into the same sort of conversation topic as the exclusive content, not exclusive titles, but exclusive content. If we look yeah. back at Avengers, Spider Man yeah, yeah. in the Avengers game being on PlayStation but not being on Xbox. If you had both, you're more likely to buy the PlayStation one because you're getting an extra free character. Um, a bit shitty. A, a different when it's built into the console and it's a console feature. Less less shitty in that in that case. They can't be. It's part of the console. It's not just a company being a cunt. But um, see, um, I watched Kerak Craft. He was a you know a good friend of the podcast, and uh, and when we did the team chat charity stream. Um, he was another one of our teammates there. Uh, I was watching him play Astro, Astrobot. Yeah, I, I try. I tried the, the new one. Yeah, yeah. On the on the yeah. PlayStation, he was showing me like some of the features and stuff, and uh, he was trying to shoot a gun or whatever, or pull it. I think it was like just pull a lever. But that that game is specifically a showcase for the controller. Uh, yeah, put out there, and he was showing me like this, um, like a one arm bandit, and. Um, it was like locked, and and the actual trigger on the controller was locked as well. So like you pulled the trigger to pull the arm down on the the one arm bandit, but the you know the controller trigger locked as well, so you couldn't do it. And it's That's this very awesome. like yeah, it's this very like involving experience. And I think you know if you can implement that into say Call of Duty or you know the next Horizon game and. and it's, it's that is going to make a difference. That's a, that's a huge, um, you know, immersion feature, and I think that's definitely. I think that's why definitely yeah. something uh, that the Xbox have to contend with. Yeah, hundred percent. And they, I think it was, um, I can't remember who it was, but someone said it earlier in the year. One of the big companies said it earlier in the year, and it was, it might have been Jim Ryan, or it could have been again Mark Cerny, um, who basically said we're. We're at a point right now with consoles where graphically there isn't going to be a huge amount they can do to make them better with the technology that we currently have. Mm-hmm. Like 
the technology in there is pushing or above a lot of PCs at the moment, like the brand new consoles. So there's not a huge amount they can do, but the two things they can push is speed, loading times, which they have done, and how you interact with the consoles, sound and, and touch. And that's what Sony, you can tell, have really pushed on this generation to go, well, we know we can't get much better in graphics. Yeah. What can we push? Yeah. Whereas Xbox have just... Not, not in the bad way. But, <laughs> yeah, they've taken the stance of power and speed which is fine yeah and if that's that's the route they want to go down and you know a lot of people have said um the xbox controller is the best controller to ever exist i mean it might now have some have a contender for that but prior prior to the dual sense five um they've always said everyone's always said that the xbox controller is the best controller out there mm-hmm. so why change what's n- what's not broken can't, i can see why xbox didn't bother changing the console there's no the controller there's no requirement to when it's already up there as one of the best yeah but yeah anyway should we um should we move on to the next story so do you want to cover this one yeah um n7 day and the the mass effect remaster that they've all been waiting for that it happened it finally happened finally yeah oh, i think arrogance. i was in the middle of sleeping when jb crashed through the bedroom was like oh my god <laughs> I, I don't know why I actually messaged Jamie. Accent, I was like, but... I was going to say, did he, did he just crash into the bedroom and put yeah. on a British accent? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. It's finally out. I don't know what happened there. Probably because he was talking to Mike. But I, I, I don't know. He was so excited about it. And I personally couldn't relate because I only enjoyed the first two, but not enough to fight through Andromeda or whatever. And, yeah. What but about the third I, one? You could, you just completely glazed over the third one. You just went yeah. one, two, Andromeda. Because <laughs> that's that's also like a Witcher three for me. I keep starting it, and then it just gets boring at the third. I'm gonna piss a lot of people off, but <laughs> I'm so excited for everyone that's super excited about it. And I know it's been long awaited, and that's awesome. But also, what? I, don't... I mean, it has been very long awaited. Mike, you're very excited for it, aren't you? Um, you're a big Mass Effect fan. Yeah, I mean. Mass, Mass Effect, like every, everyone knows that um, I'm a bit of a, a PlayStation fanboy and I love that console, but back in the day of 360, Mass Effect turned me in from a PlayStation fanboy to like the Xbox kid. And uh, I ended up buying one and picking Mass Effect up. Um, and I just got hooked on it. Like, I remember actually going around to my sister's and she had it and I just jumped on it for a bit and then I started a new game. And I was there for hours just playing it. It was just the sounds was just like, like yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah, see it, see it, <laughs> bye. <laughs> I'll see myself out a, when I'm done. I had a similar thing because I never at at the point of which Mass Effect One came out on the console, I didn't have an Xbox or anything, and I remember. I had a, a good friend at the time who I used to like literally spend every weekend with like Saturday morning through to Sunday afternoon. And um, every single weekend I went there, I'd just be playing my Mass Effect save on his Xbox while he was doing stuff on his PC. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's just, it was, I mean, I, I loved Mass Effect. Mass Effect 1, 2 and 3 are fantastic games and I'm very much looking forward to, to the remaster to see what changes they've made and how they've improved it for the modern day because it's quite a while ago they came out yeah i mean do you know the dates they were i have no idea no idea yeah so, I'm very very old two so mass effect one was 2008 i believe two was 2010 and three was 2012 so i'm pretty sure that's right so that's yeah a good 12 to like eight to 12 years ago these three games came out i, so, I will say i will say i, I will probably play at least the first game, because I loved the story of the first game and just kind of the pacing of it. Obviously, I felt like everything else about it was clunky with, clunky with the, the shooting and the fighting and stuff. But if yep. they fix that up, I would love to play the first one again. And then hopefully that means that I might be a convert. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, because number two, in my opinion, is the best one. Um, that's the one I enjoyed the most. And that one is fantastic. and. Mass Effect does something that a lot of other games don't do, um, which is your 
decisions from each game make have an effect on the next game. But they actually yeah. do kind of have an effect. Yeah, it's not just a, <laughs> oh yeah, it has an effect. No, it doesn't. It genuinely has an effect. Um, so you could, whatever decisions you make in number one will ultimately have an effect on number three, which yeah. is I, a really cool concept. You'll have a main character by one that. and then they won't be in two. So yeah, all that happened to me and I had all of my favorites and for some reason I was so bad at it that all of the good people died. <laughs> I got Brilliant. With, I mean, without going into too much like spoiler territory, is these are now coming out for potentially a new generation of gamers who may not have played them before. Um, I know I do remember, Mike, you'll probably remember this, there is a point in number two where ultimately you get to pick between whether to allow a genocide to happen or not. Oh, That's yeah, a pretty yeah. big decision yeah, to have yeah. to make. That was a big one. Just, Especially just like, allow again. all of this race of play people, to, uh, like creatures, to die. How will that affect number three? You know, like 13-year-old Mike really fucking struggled with this decision. <laughs> <laughs> just had a full-on existential crisis. Who am I? What am I doing? This is What's a genocide? genocide? <laughs> what does this button do? That's after you've gone on your dial-up computer to look up what genocide was. <laughs> <laughs> your mum your mom walks in like, what? why have you spent three hours looking up genocide? It's just loading. <laughs> Get off the computer. I want to use the phone. <laughs> Here I it's... am, like, oh, I can date ladies. <laughs> yeah. Date all the you people. You can. You can date all the people. It's great. <laughs> you can date all aliens. the people and the non people, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some aliens don't even have genders. There is no gender. They're just Ooh. they're just aliens. Like That's hard. I mean, although actually to, to be fair, twenty twenty, like gender's a construct, isn't it? I right. So anyway, moving on from that though, so, yeah. <laughs> that's a different rabbit hole we do not want to go down. Speaking of um, uh, rabbit holes, that's, that's a very that's not even a segue. <laughs> that was the worst segue. <laughs> the worst. Segue. I said rabbits, but I was thinking of foxes because Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> is the fastest selling uh, PS4 exclusive, with five million copies sold since July, which is insane. It's yeah, so insane. It's I mean, absolutely insane. We, we all played through that game, right? I'm still playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm still playing it too. I'm um, I'm waiting for the PS5, and then I'm going to start a new a new a new game plus on it because I really enjoy that game. What surprises me is that um, I'm not saying it's like because it's a fantastic game and it fully deserves all the praise it's got. I'm surprised it beat Spider Man. Um, not, I'm not um, saying it's best. It's worse than Spider Man. It's just, a fantastic game. They're they're very good in their own merits. I'm just surprised that Spider Man, Spider Man, that it sold name, more, isn't it? It's a bigger exactly. Name. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm surprised that a fairly unknown like genre of game, really, like the a samurai open world samurai game, granted made by a very good studio. Who doesn't love samurai and ninjas though? Show me one person that doesn't like samurai and ninjas. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure I could find you one. Well, pretty sure I know one. Yeah, tell him, tell him to come to, come to me. Might, come might be, it might be a long flight. <laughs> yeah, I. So I wasn't sure if I was going to get it or not, and I don't know if it's part of the fastest selling is because of word of mouth or just watching other people play i watched jb play it and i was like i want to be that guy i want to do the things that this guy is doing and it, it just looked so fun and was, was, with, it, was it the was it the hot spring scene it was the butt yeah. and the tan line it's yeah. always the butt <laughs> and the haikus everybody knows how much i love haikus love and the haikus. fact that i can yeah and bust out i was like at i can any point <laughs> at any point and now i can look at butts and write haikus Come on, man. This game is built for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I'm not an online gamer at all. I don't, I don't like to play games online. And watching JB play the multiplayer, maybe the release of that, and people saw what fun it looked like, made people want to get it too. Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be very curious to see how much the online multiplayer affected sales like did that see a huge increase in sales is that where a lot of the like the like a second wave of sales have come from um 
so I'll be quite I'll be quite interested in that figure. Well, I mean, I will talk about it in the next segment a little bit, but I did we did buy a second copy so that I could play multiplayer with JB. Yeah, but you didn't buy five million separate no, I second did not. copies. So <laughs> it wasn't all that. you. There were other people apparently out there buying them as well. Uh, it's always about me only, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, on you that, <laughs> on that, well, let's move on before Sarah fucking blows her shit all over the place. <laughs> before yeah. my before, titties explode. Before her titties explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I didn't know what I couldn't think of what else to put as the placeholder for the for the episode. So I was like, that'll do. <laughs> I came in there and I was like, what? So, Sarah, what have you been playing this week? I have been playing Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer. <laughs> what a great segue. <laughs> yeah, I it's it's been exactly a week since I started playing the multiplayer. I've been maining the hunter. I just kind of like the math involved and having to shoot the arrows perfectly to get headshots. So I've been really enjoying that. <laughs> <laughs> and I just beat my first nightmare survival mode, and I'm I am placed two thousand out of six thousand, which is super exciting. That's, but that's holy crap, theme. yeah, it's so fun. It's, it's what so what exciting. what is nightmare survival? I've not played it, so what is nightmare survival mode? It's it's the hardest it's the hardest mode for um, online gameplay, and you get super awesome gear. So it's basically just like a defender camp kind of thing. You have I think right now four different maps and you just fight waves of people. And this nightmare survival is uh, just the hardest mode of survival that you can play. I mean, interesting. JB said that, you know, four weeks down the line, I probably won't be playing this. And I yeah. think we're hitting about three weeks now. Yeah. Of and... Being out and we're still playing it and it's still going strong. So all right, you've only got one week left and then, um, then you'll stop playing it. <laughs> But no, I'm, I I'm still yeah, in it. I think I'm still in. I'm still in. I don't. I don't get because, like, me you and JB played for a bit, didn't we, Sarah? And, um, yeah. Um, it, it's just a good time. It's just kind of like it's pretty chilled, so you can just hang around and have a chat and stuff. But it's also it gets really intense where you've got to, like have your call outs, like, oh, I'm going to, to this, you know, this post or you know this objective, and I'm heading here, and I'll, I'll, we kind of like. Because there's four of you, you'll kind of like divide your troops between the three three camps, and you'll you know you'll try and hold them off as best you can. But it's just yeah, that constant it's... gameplay loop of like hold the line, you know, hold this area, and it's it's that for me is just a an absolute hook, and it sells me. Yeah, I, I just I love because a lot of the multiplayer games are competitive, and I don't like to talk about my mom at all. So when it's <laughs> when it's co-op, I and I'm working with someone to to beat something. It's just more enjoyable for me. And like my, like Mike said, just it's just cooperative. So if somebody's down, you're like, okay, I'm here. Do you have him, or do you want me to go get him? And it's just it, sure it's the same waves, but I don't know. It's just really exciting, and it's, Holy it's shit. a really good time. So we should talk about the the gold run that we did. Where you just oh, save yeah. the day. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So yeah, it was a couple of days ago. Um, we were playing. It was me, uh, Mike, JB, and your nephew. Yeah, Breadstick. Breadstick Ninja. And we were at the last wave, and it was a boss wave. And Mike and JB were down Holding at the, the farm, line. and I was... <laughs> Holding the line, and I was across the map, and Breadstick was still fighting a couple of other people. Also so holding I'm the line. <laughs> also holding the line, and I'm booking it to the farm, and I'm like, I can make it because on the gold level, if one person dies, you all feel the entire mission. Yeah. So I'm booking it, trying to revive JB because he's got he's got like three seconds left. I literally revive him when he's got zero seconds left, and Breadstick beats the last guy as soon as Mike is about to die. It yeah. was so intense. It was so like down to the wire, wasn't it? Like to the point where yeah. you were running over and I was like, right, Sarah, get JB first because he's got, you know, the the less the least timer. And then um, yeah. it gave it just gave Aaron that time to like finish everyone off like he does. Um, yeah. And it, it, like it just... he does. <laughs> like he does, yeah. 
it just was it was it, so so intense and it was but that's what makes it fun yeah right we should probably move on because we are hitting the 40 minute mark oh my bad i mean it's all of our bad we've been rambling um <laughs> A lot of news to talk about this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fine. Good. It's fine. <laughs> We've had a week. It's fine. <laughs> so it's right, yeah. to be fair, it's been two weeks because we didn't talk about news last week. So that is true. True. It's always going to happen. Um, really like did you interest. want to cover you? Uh, did you no. want to cover yours first? Because mine's going to be quite a big chunk. All right then. I'll I'll, I'll fire away on my battle of the backlog. The backlog um, this week because I've, I've you know I've not got PS5, so I've just been. Scrolling through my library endlessly to try and find some games to play. So, I've, so I've installed a bunch of games, um, but I've played, but not completed, not finished, not given enough time. So, I dived back into a game called Moonlighter. Which Sarah said you'd love this game. Yeah, because it's essentially a roguelike, which turns a lot of people off instantly. Um, Me being one of those people. Yeah, but this is it's it's a little bit different. They've all got their own unique hooks, and this one is a good one. Um, so you you're a shopkeeper, and uh, by day and then by night you go into the dungeons and and you kill monsters and then sell the items that you get, and then you can upgrade your shop and then it's just a, a constant gameplay loop and it has that thing where if you die you don't lose all of your progress and you're not starting completely again from scratch. You just you know you just constantly improve, and I think that's key to like a good roguelike. But I've been playing that. I've been upgrading my shop, killed some monsters, and I, I set myself the challenge of just beating the the first dungeons boss. Like uh, you get um, there's four dungeons, like four key areas, and the yep. first one is golems. It's like all stone and slime. So that's just the setting and the art style. So the art style is very like pixel, you know, pixel art. Um, it's really nice, really pretty game. Uh, so I set myself the challenge of just beating the first boss because I've never beat it before. And then eventually beat that boss and I've not picked it up since because I moved on to another game I've been playing. Uh, excuse me one second. I feel oh, like the time. roguelike stuff, the roguelike stuff I really enjoy. I think the not losing everything that you have reminds me of Rogue Legacy, where sure you have a whole new character, but you still have like the money and the upgrades that you've had. Yeah, I think that's it's definitely key to like it's just keeping your progress even a little bit. Um, you know, you might lose money or whatever, but you know, keeping you know like your armor or your weapons that you've upgraded and stuff. Right. Um. I also played Hollow Knight, which does the complete opposite of Moonlighter, and it's, it's <laughs> essentially like Souls, where you, you know, Dark Souls, where you lose everything as you progress. I've not, I've just chipped into that. I've been very like jumping from game to game. So I'm just uh, waiting for PS5 to come. I mean, to be fair, if any anyone who's listened to more than one episode of us will know that it's rare to pin you down to one game. <laughs> You, you generally play a lot of different <laughs> games in a week. Yeah. Every week it's like, well, this week I played these five games. <laughs> yes, yeah, so another one I dipped into. Oh, there was a few of these this week. I've, I've, had, a, I've had a bad week, to be fair, of gaming. Um, I dipped into Shadow of War or Shadow of War Door or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, <laughs> and I just I just hated it. Like It was just boring. Like, the combat's 100% kind of like, with you on this. Yeah. So it's 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 like the it looks sequence, great. It's it's a great concept, but it's shit. Like yeah, it is. Yeah, um, it's like worst sequence. case scenario Assassin's Creed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it is that. It's Assassin's Creed set in like just a, a shitty Auckland. <laughs> like yeah, but it's not even set in like good parts of Lord of the Rings. It's yeah. just set in the well, same mud camp every five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but the opening sequence sees you running through this like gondor esque city, and it's just it just looks really empty. It's like really big space, and then small groups of like orcs that you fight, and it's it's just it's just not good. So I've I've been that off in almost immediately, and then um, shout out to the boys at uh, Boomerang. They sent me Star Wars Squadrons. Which I, I thought you were going to say something else, and I was like, "Why are they sending you that?" <laughs> <laughs> no. 
Um, so we Star Wars Squadrons, which after your little review, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll dip into that. And this was this game was almost like a breakup to me. It's just that last nail in the coffin that was like, <laughs> I fucking hate Star Wars. Star Wars <laughs> is shit. <laughs> it's so shit. <laughs> I don't care about the fucking blockades and, you know, the rebels and all that. I just don't care. Star you Wars know, is uh... shit. I just... Are you a Mandalorian fan, though? You know what? You know what, right? This is weird because um, <laughs> I fucking love the Mandalorian because it's it's really far removed from the Star Wars universe. No, and I agree. I was having this conversation with uh, Ryan and another friend of us um, earlier today in that, I, like you, I've fallen out of love with core Star Wars, like the the Empire Rebellion Jedi Sith yeah. core storyline because the last like, fuck off I'm done with them yeah the last three films have been <laughs> pretty keep the shit target, to be honest keep the house I'm done <laughs> <laughs> um, Han Solo that film was hit and miss but yeah I, the fact that Mando like you say is so far away he's, he's exploring that extended universe I mean, is much more interesting yeah the bounty hunters are always cool and just I mean we've all seen Dog the Bounty Hunter it's pretty cool. I mean, it is nothing <laughs> like that, but okay. <laughs> Imagine that in space. I mean, if they made, <laughs> to be fair, if they, to the quality that they made the Fallen Order, but without lightsabers and shit, and you played as a Mandalorian bounty hunter, that'd be fucking I'd, sick. Yeah, yeah. I'd do yeah. that. I'd play I'd, that. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd play I... That. But, I'm um, with you. I I don't get I don't get Star Wars, but the Mandalorian show. I was like, I like this. This is nice. This is new. Yeah, it's it's refreshing because it's it's not about like you know space swords and um and and like, and like all that kind of the rebels are doing it again. And it's it's like ah oh, whatever. But Mando is <laughs> Mando's a good series, I think. And I enjoyed watching it because I watched it recently. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying Mando. I literally caught up with today's episode, or yesterday's episode, today actually. I've not watched the new season, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. But um, if it starts getting a bit Space Wizardy, which I feel like it might, um, I don't, I'm not spoiling anything. Um, but, but yeah, I'll probably drop off if it goes into that kind of territory. I mean, the thing is, and again, this is where, like, I'm, well, I'm like my view on the more extended universe. If it does go down to space wizards, but it looks at sort of the more extended universe of space wizards, then it doesn't go down the core. I like that we're just Obi Wan Kenobi, space Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, this is this is what we're calling the Jedi, just space wizards. But yeah, so if it doesn't go down the core, like Luke Skywalker like uh obi-wan kenobi and and all those core sort of ones that he's focused on for the films it might not be too bad if we get to meet some like ex jedis or or even if anybody's seen the clone wars and you know that darth maul comes back with robotic legs <laughs> i mean if he comes back in mando that'd be fucking awesome yeah i'm into robotic legs i'm into darth maul and robotic legs <laughs> and also hot take that the prequels are the best trilogy you can go fuck yourself. That's incorrect. I'll take that. Um, uh, anyway, but... fuck Star Wars. Um, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, sent, I sent Squadrons back, threw it in the post box, like... Um, Aggressively. You know, like a Hermes Sweet. postman, just fucking get out of my sight. Um, <laughs> so I installed Skyrim again. <laughs> like the oh, nerd. my goodness. Because it's been nine years. It's nine years old. Yeah, exactly. It's why you should put it its down. Ninth birthday, and it's still fucking good. And it's just it's I just literally, like... literally, Sarah messaged Mike earlier. I was like, "Why is it in my mind? I can see you purchasing a PS5, loading that bad boy up, and the first game you install is Skyrim." <laughs> Skyrim. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Skyrim, no loaded screens, mate. You kidding? All well, over exactly. That. I'm all over that. Do you, you think can... you will? I think he will. I will hundred percent, hundred percent play that on on PS Five, and if it comes out as a PS Five, like have to repurchase it, I will. I'm a sucker. <laughs> I'll do it. Like, I don't care. What's the? Um, I've just gone through a mad current... breakup with Star Wars. Are you kidding me? 
Exactly. What's right the now. loading? The rough loading times now? What like sixty seconds a minute, minute yeah. and a half? Some yeah, of them. The, some of them can be quite long. The, the further you get into the game, the more it has to load. Um, essentially, because exactly the items you pick up and stuff. But um, now he can get into his Graham Brown in like under ten seconds. In. <laughs> HD Graham Brown. Pull it, HD eight K Graham Brown. <laughs> you were you were just talking about how you're a sucker and will repurchase it. I just want to note that I think repurchasing games for different platforms is great because like Darkest Dungeon, I own for literally everything you could even possibly think of because I love it so much. And I think there's nothing wrong with supporting games that you enjoy over and over again. Yeah. I mean, it's just Skyrim is just a meme at this point, though, is it? It's one of those that's available literally everywhere. I mean, to, to the point that they are, that Bethesda themselves put it on like alexa yeah yeah <laughs> just just shows how ridiculous yeah that's true okay, i'm sure you can play it on like a pregnancy test now <laughs> <laughs> just it's just it's just everywhere it's on everything <laughs> you can play while you wait for results <laughs> just that's madness true. um right shane anything else that you, is that you done that's me done, that I'm, your, done, your I'm, I'm in done. skyrim now i'm not playing anything else <laughs> well, uh, I only have, well, I've got two games to talk about, but only one game I actually want to talk about this week. Um, firstly, before we get into that, though, I've got a Divinity update. Yeah. Hey, we've played hey! some more Divinity. Oh, it's, it's, it's been, been a, it's been like a week or two since we uh, had a Divinity update. So me and Ryan um, realised that we had gone to a high level area and we're getting fucked by everything that we came across. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were at a troll who tried to charge us five grand to cross a bridge. I refused. He told me to go kill another troll. Expensive. I went and met that troll. And he was like, I'm only going to charge you one gold. Plus, I think you should kill him because my bridge is much nicer. And in fairness to him, his bridge was much nicer. So I agreed to kill the other troll. Nice. We've yet so to do that. Because he's... business troll. I like it. Yeah, yeah. you know, just like getting... He was just <laughs> like, troll. look at my bridge. My bridge is much nicer. He overcharges for his shit bridge. I undercharge for my beautiful bridge. So I was like, you know what? Businessman of the year. <laughs> Let's do this. Um, and then, yeah, so we did that. We murdered a bunch of people, you know, usual, usual stuff. A um, bunch of people meaning anyone that crossed your path. Pretty much. <laughs> My favourite moment of Moving this up. week's Divinity Update <laughs> is that we, we found, I can't remember his name, but we found a man outside of a house and he was crying and digging a grave. So I spoke to him and he told me about how he should have been there but how his parents have been killed by the silent monks that are pets of this character called dallas and um just just to interrupt why are silent monks always so menacing yeah why every time don't yeah don't know but anyway (laughs) um yeah he, he cries to us he gets angry at us and then we're like mate look go over it um he disappears and as soon as he disappears ryan dug up both of his dead parents Literally <laughs> dug them up so that we could loot their corpses. Wow, Ryan. <laughs> and then we, the house that they had been killed in, which was being guarded by crusaders that the, the guy we spoke to couldn't get in to get his parents' stuff, we managed to persuade our way past them. And inside was, lo and behold, four silent monks. But they were not moving. They couldn't do anything. And when you clicked on them, it literally gave you the option of, it said something like, this one looks dead inside. Leave it alone or kill it. So we just walked around the room and just killed all of them with a single arrow to oh, the head. Oh, so sad. <laughs> so sad. And then we looted the dead parents' house and then left. So that happened. Uh, that was, that's pretty much wow. the key moment wow. of, of this week's Divinity Update. We dug up some corpses, <laughs> looted mean, their body, and then looted their house. lower than looting corpses? <laughs> that have been that are in freshly dug graves. <laughs> so it's not even like we're digging up a corpse that's like been there for ten years. They but they'd literally just been laid. What's um, the good stuff? So yeah, let us know in the comments if... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got a letter and a dagger, so no, they weren't it wasn't worth our time uh, at all. I um I didn't well, even I the experience. Well, I was hoping that I'd be able to eat one of their body parts, but none of their body parts were detached either, so I couldn't even eat a body part. So, you know, (laughs) just hate it when you dig up a corpse and there's no body parts to eat. (laughs) (laughs) 
damn it, I'm gonna have to go to McDonald's now. <laughs> um, but no, the game I wanted to talk about this week is Destiny 2 Beyond Light. So, for those of you who don't know, Beyond Light launched this week. It is the new core DLC for Destiny, starts off the new, the whole new sort of main campaign of Destiny. And they basically said they're not doing a Destiny 3. What they're going to do is they want it to be like an ever-updating series. So this is the first of the big major updates that have come our way. So the the key points of the update is it's removed a bunch of planets. So the actual planets that we can visit has dropped by three. Um, they've also removed a bunch of strikes, moved a bunch of uh, different bits and bobs so that they can... A, make the game smaller so that it's easier to update and that they can add more stuff. And they're basically going to be doing what's called vaulting, where as as they cycle stuff, they're going to take away planets, but then bring back old planets and constantly cycle stuff so that you're constantly getting new stuff. But they, they don't make the game too big because it got to a point where loading times on console were disgusting. Like, you're talking like a five-minute loading time. I could go and literally make a sandwich in the time it took to load. Um <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've but, heard about a lot of these issues, and, and I think it's a yeah, smart fix. It's, it's definitely a smart fix. Um, and so far, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Loading times have been dramatically d- decreased. Um, the new campaign came out. I completed the campaign uh, in the first night I played it. So the campaign's not particularly long, but no Destiny campaign ever is. The campaign serves more as a prologue to the end game. And it always has in Destiny. It serves as a prologue to that, to that in-game content. Um, it was okay. It, you know, there was some, there was some interesting little difficult parts for anyone who plays Destiny. The stranger comes back. You get to see some really cool cutscenes. Um, and once you complete it, you get the gun. No time to explain, which is a nice little nod to Destiny One, where you meet the stranger, and she literally says to you, "I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain." <laughs> Um, so yeah I mean overall it's been fun there's a new power called stasis which is basically an ice power so previously you've had fire uh, arc which is electric and void and now they've added ice Uh, my take on the ice powers is that I don't like them and they are broken (laughs) Um, I play a titan I don't think the titan ice power is that good I'm, I'm not a big fan of it I know Ryan really likes the hunter one in PvP, it is broken as fuck. I mean, so there is a that's that's FPS's new updates just all over. As soon as the new gun added, it's always overpowered. And it's just you know it'll get, yeah, it'll but this is balanced broken to an unbelievable level. Um, so everyone starts with the same grenade, which basically just builds an ice wall. It basically the equivalent. I read somewhere someone say this earlier. It's like playing Overwatch, but everyone's playing May. <laughs> like because awful. yeah there's so all of the moves freeze you in place and then you have to hold long press circle to to unfreeze but obviously while you're frozen you're vulnerable um there's the there is a grenade that sends out a ice shock wave that freezes anything it touches it can freeze up to three enemies in a row before it ends but it goes through walls so you could be on the other okay. side of a wall and this grenade will freeze you through the wall. So you will be frozen on the other side of the wall. You could be in cover and you get frozen and they can just walk around and kill you instantly because you can't, you physically can't escape it. You know it what? is so broken. Right. This has been, we've known each other for what, well over a year now. Mm-hmm. And there's been a few um, Divinity 2 updates since then. And every time I'm like, Oh, I'd probably jump back into Divinity, you know, all the lads. I mean, you it. definitely mean Destiny, but yes. Uh, Destiny, sorry, yeah. Um, you know, there's been a few, mm. it was like, you know, I might like, jump back in and then I speak to you about it and you're like, well, this is fucking shit and this is shit. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, no, probably give no, that no, a miss. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. I'm really enjoying the PvE <laughs> and I've always enjoyed PvE and Destiny more than the PvP. Um, I'm doing a lot of strikes and stuff at the moment, and I'm enjoying all the new guns they've added, or at least the ones I've played. I'm enjoying the new quests they've added. The, they've tidied up how everything works, like the menus work, how all the um, additional stuff works. 
everything kind of been just tidied up and a little bit nicer. Our armor works a little bit differently now. And that's all good. I'm really enjoying the PvE side of things. It's just the PvP that's that's broken. What they have done now, and I fucking love, is so there are certain guns where you can only get them by completing a, usually a very long quest. And those quest lines are often fucking annoying. And they will often involve Crucible, the PvP side of things. Oh, okay. And it will be something like, so the, there's a gun at the moment and it's called a Dord. And it's a sniper rifle and it looks amazing. And in old Destiny world, it would have been a quest line that would be like, you have to get 150 headshots in Crucible plus so many points plus so many wins or something. Yeah. And what they've done this time is when you go and collect the quest, it gives you the option. So you could pick a Crucible quest line, a Strike quest line, so a PvE quest line, or a Gambit quest line, which is PvE pvp cross okay um so now you're not forced to have to play a game mode you don't enjoy which is really pleasing so i've gone yeah, me and matt have both gone that's just for the like, pve side that's just like quality of life right yeah just li- look qu- little quality of, quality of life things like that i mean it's still going to be a long quest line but it means i can just play a shitload of pve whereas ryan and max have taken the pvp route so they've got to get like the the precision headshots in Crucible yeah. as opposed to doing it in PvE, and PvE is much easier anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, uh, it's early days. We haven't seen a lot of so what just, the new season has to offer. Just to pose a question, mm-hmm. uh, me and I'm assuming Sarah, we haven't got much time in this game. Um, I didn't get past the tutorial. Yeah, there we go. Me, me neither. Um, why? Why should we jump in now? If to be honest, I think right now is the best time to jump in. The opening, like the core campaign, has been um, not shortened, but it has been uh, refined from the very beginning right up until like to to get you to the point where the story is now has been refined to make the whole um, that whole part of the game much more enjoyable the story flow much better um you gain a better understanding of things very quickly the game gives you you're not gonna jump in and be like level or light level 10 while we're all sitting at like level 1180 i think mine is now the game jumps you up to after a certain point in the like early campaign it jumps you up to 1050 so you're not going to be massively behind everyone um they've now brought in seasons which they've been doing for the last sort of year but they've like really refined what seasons are and how that works they've really re- started to refine a lot of the content so that you don't there's you're not in a point now where you're overwhelmed with content they've refined what is the good content and what was the content that was like Meh, i'll play it but i don't really want to have to yeah like um, you're saying it's it's kind of removing a lot of the filler type stuff and then just yeah quality of life and it's it's right now it's at the best quality of life position it's ever been for destiny 2 in my opinion um although yes stasis does add an annoying element to it i feel like a lot of people are going to come away from stasis and they're obviously gonna um nerf that grenade so it doesn't get you through walls because it's fucking ridiculous but um on the whole i watched a stream of a friend of mine uh, cheddar 1.5 i think it is (laughs) Um, he was playing uh, the new, you know, the new story mode, and he's yep. he's playing a certain boss, and the the ice was just kept killing him over and over again. To the point where it's like freezing in midair and shit like that. It kept dropping in the hole. Uh, yeah, it looked kind of frustrating, but that's why I watched that guy. To be fair, but um, yeah, it, it it can be frustrating. Like I say, in PvE, it's not too bad. In PvP, it's very frustrating, but. Yeah. Um, like I say, right now it's in the best quality of life position it's been in a long time, and it's m- the most accessible it's ever been in a long time. Um, and it's in a position where you can get involved with your friends who have been playing it for a long time with ease, without feeling like you're massively far behind or trailing horrendously, or have to spend the next six months working to try and get into the same position as them. Yeah. yeah. What what do you reckon, Sarah? Are we jumping in or what? Mm, I'm okay. I'm 
okay. <laughs> and that's a no for me. <laughs> right, so, I mean, so, I said um, I was gonna. I was just gonna I, ask Sarah what else she's been playing. But um, go on, Shane. I was just gonna say. I did say to uh, Ryan when um, you mentioned about downloading. I was like, all he'll do is download it, load it up for thirty seconds, hate it, uninstall it. Mate, that's been a, a, a really like current trend with me. Load a game up, hate it for an hour, and then just turn it off and install it and never want to play it again. I'm looking at you, fucking Star Wars Squadrons, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as as Max said, so is there anything else you wanted to talk about on your what you've been playing this week before we move on to our final topic? Yeah, just real quick. Um, some, before bed, I play a little bit of Sheltered on the Switch. It was on it was on sale, and it just kind of like a resource management kind of thing. And like I said, I really like math, so anything that I can use that with Sheltered just kind of is a is a fun way to waste fifteen twenty minutes. And but that's just kind of like my Switch game that I'm playing right now. Well, I'm what well, I'm 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 understanding the more time i've spent with you in recording these podcasts is that you like games that aren't games to most normal people <laughs> yeah so, uh, re- resource yeah. management maths game okay that's that's not a game sarah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that and like cooking games like fast-paced ones like cook serve delicious i love all of those where it's just key memorization and i i, I just love my indie games i can't help it I, there's just something about it that feels just it's just sweet. I don't know. But that's my Switch game. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I mean, talking about indie games um, and sort of what they have to offer, that kind of brings us into our next topic anyway. So our topic... <laughs> Fuck's sake, Mike. <laughs> I'm trying to segue us. And he's, talk- he's asking me if I want to watch him go for a wee. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so this week um, I wanted to talk about value for money because we're, we've got a new console generation coming out um, for obviously already out in America and coming to the UK within the next week. We know that the top end games are going to be coming out £10 more expensive than what or $10 more expensive than they were in the last generation things like inflation and whatnot games haven't increased in price in a long time so we know that there's a reason for it um games now coming out at the i don't know what so it's 70 pound for us for a new playstation game do you know what the is that what the price is in america sarah is it 70 dollars uh, it 80 dollars it, it it's probably going to be 60 dollars 60 or no 70 dollars yeah 70 dollars sorry okay um so yeah with that in mind what i wanted to talk about this week is value for money and what are our our expectations of video games and video game developers and video game consoles um, and what we expect from our money to be our for us to be able to part part with that money what 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 should we what we'd be getting what we'd be expecting from a game so um firstly so my my question to you two is firstly for you to be able to part with your money to purchase a game and not not talking about the game has to be interesting or the game has to uh, be like a, a character that you like or whatever what are your expectations of what a game is going to be able to deliver to you for you to go that's worth me putting my hand in my pocket as opposed to watching someone else play it on Twitch or Mike renting it as, as we often talk about. Uh, Sarah, if we want to start with you. Yeah. I, especially if it's, if the graphics aren't that great, I just am tired of playing games and feeling like they all are early access. I just, I just hate having to spend all that money and then being in two months. Yeah, we have are throwing out an update that completely changes everything that you've done and you might lose your save. So if people want to be more patient with having a release date, I'd be up for that. But also that extra $10 or £10, if there is that haptic feedback, and I think this is a really strong argument for people to buy PlayStation is that if Xbox isn't upgrading other than like those 
speed of load times, I really want that that feedback back in that controller. I will I would spend that extra money for that experience because man, I just can't wait to play horror games on that thing. I like that you said uh you you basically essentially you you want your games to not be broken. So I take it you've been playing a lot of Ubisoft games recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As they are often broken. Yeah, I not that I have been playing it, but it's just I'm just, just so sick of it. Even with everything you see on Steam is early access, and that's great that you can get that experience. And I'm really excited about playing a game, but I'm just sick of being a guinea pig to figure out what's wrong with the game. Like you've got people on your team for that. Don't make me do it. Yeah, I mean you're basically paying to be, you know, a a, a tester. You know, video yeah. game tester. So. Mm. There, you, you, there are jobs to be tester. You should be paying me to test it. I'm just, I'm just sick of being a free guinea pig that's making them profit. You know what I mean? So I, if I'm going to pay that extra $10, I'm going to wait until that game is good to go. But by that time it's good to go, it's usually cheaper. So Fair. What about you, Mike? What were your expectations for you to reach into future hand in your pocket? So I'm a big PlayStation fan, as we all know. Um, and PlayStation exclusives are now coming out at seventy pound a pop. Yep, which is expensive. It's a lot of money. You know, you look at two games. They're like, you know, Last of Us Two, Spider Man. You know, say they bring out sequels, that's one hundred and forty quid. Yeah. Uh, th- thanks for um, <laughs> thanks for acknowledging that maths there. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to to, you got to put it. that maths in perspective <laughs> is that one game is around 10 to 20 pound more expensive than the average price of a microwave or two kettles. That's, two That's kettles. crazy. And the average price of a microwave in the UK is around 60 pound. So it's, it's 10 pound more expensive than buying a microwave. And it, it's like it, it's like a month's grocery too. It's crazy. <laughs> All that, you know. <laughs> but um, for the, for those games to come out, you know, they have to be polished. They have to be like Nintendo are one of the um, huge, um, you know, game companies who bring out a polished product every single time. You look at Odyssey. You look at Breath of the Wild. Smash. Yeah. All of those. But they're also one of the key companies to bring out old games and charge horrendous prices for them. Yeah, yeah. But, I they mean, they have the 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 worst in one area and the best in another area. But, uh, but yeah. then we we all we all pay it. <laughs> like we all pay it. Like suckers, yeah, you all do. Yeah. So it's like value is a is a weird one as well because like I buy a lot of games on sale. Um, yeah. You know, I've spent like, I think I remember um, Ellie's going to kill me when she hears this, but I remember saying to you, Shane, it's like, because you were saying, oh, I spent like, you know, 60 quid on games this week. And I was like, yeah, about that. <laughs> I was like, I spent about 120 this week on on games. And it was all games I'd just like picked up in the sales and shit like that. Um, This is way before I was saving for a wedding, Ellie, just, just so you know. Um, but the thing is that's that that price tag is fine if you can turn around and say to and be like i've spent 120 pound but i've got 10 games out of it or i spent 60 pound and i've got five games out of it if you're spending 120 pound and you can go look ellie look at this one game that i've purchased (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's when it becomes a little bit more difficult conversation i feel feel the triggers (laughs) (laughs) I guess and this is totally unrelated, but that's kind of nice about being in a relationship with someone who also likes to play games. You're like, hey, want to split it so that nothing is ever full price. Yeah. I mean, me and Ellie play a, a few games together and stuff. So I know Call of Duty is one of those that um, we definitely split because she loves it and I hate it. And we both feed off that. So. <laughs> yeah. It's the bomb. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's one of those games that we both enjoy. Um, 
But that it it really is a steep price though. It really game. is. It's, especially like I don't know if I'd be comfortable spending that amount of money for a game less than ten hours. And a lot of big name games, like uh what is it? A Resident Evil seven wasn't that long. I wouldn't I don't know if I would pay seventy dollars for that. I mean, even ten hours, I think I think that's I mean I think that's the extreme. I I'd, I'd be annoyed if i paid 70 pounds for a game that's that was less than 20 hours and yeah. the bulk i mean you look at for example all the uncharted's um god of war was probably just under 20 hours if yeah. you didn't do any of the side stuff um yeah, spider-man yeah the latest god of war spider-man's under 20 hours I mean, i'd, say, I'd be annoyed under 20 hours for spider-man but you don't account for all of the hours where you just swing around the city going we <laughs> and and obviously there's all the side stuff if yeah. you add on all the side stuff i think spider-man was about 26 to 27 hours um, not everybody likes to do side stuff to be fair um, yeah but you know that's i mean not me. I, but it's I, also I've one of the grudge. most platinum games yeah um, it is on the system so it's a people a, a lot of people have bought it spent a lot of time in it so but, um, but i mean i like so said though i mean and that's why i struggle with paying full price for titles because i i'm not a fan of side stuff um particularly if it's not interesting side stuff like i don't mind if it's an actual story-based side element where you go and meet a character and they have to go and do some like fun mission that that adds a bit of extra sort of like side story but mm. when it's collecting backpacks or collecting tokens or ubisoft's particularly bad for go around and collect whatever it was in Ghost Recon Wildlands for nine Ubisoft. hours. Ubisoft is the worst for collectibles. And I had and... this conversation with Jedi that she was playing um, uh, Odyssey. Mm. Um, and that game is just so vast and there's so many like little question marks on the map that it's just, it just becomes a chore. It just becomes yeah. like unenjoyable to just go there it's like oh i gotta go fucking all the way over here to get this i don't i don't want to pay 70 pounds to play hoarding simulator right like (laughs) and yeah that's that's ridiculous that's where it goes back to like just being a polished experience like right i'd pay um if i paid 70 quid for spider-man or the last of us or god of war i'd be happy because they are like polished perfection they are a full package game, you know. Yeah. There's not this like broken as soon on launch bullshit or you know, I mean look at um uh Cyberpunk where of that, you know, the amount of delays that that's got, if that doesn't come out and it's if that comes out and it's not polished to absolute yeah. perfection, then it's gonna be like, is this worth my money, you know? Yeah, like not only did you make me wait almost a year for delays, but you're also charging me this amount of money. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, see, I, I'm the other way. Um, I wouldn't pay seventy pound for Spider Man or for God of War or for any of the Uncharted games. Um, I very much have a view of if I can complete it, if I can complete that game in under a week, then I don't want to pay full price for it. In fact, that's why I rent. Because if I can complete it in under a week, I don't want to pay for it at all. <laughs> I want to pay as minimal money as I possibly can. It, 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 it's kind of like, um, opens that question, it's like, do you value your money in time or like the experience and the amount of fun that you've had? Yeah. I, I, like for you, it sounds like more the amount of time that you have to spend because, you know, you're very like scheduled life and work and busy and all that shit. For me, it's... Um, you know, if I can spend eight hours on a game and have like the fucking best experience, or even like two, three hours, say, Little Nightmares, Inside Limbo, those kind of really short games, and a lot of indie games that are doing it for so a short experience, or um, say Hellblade, that was maybe four, five, six hours, something like that, and it's mm. it's just a superb experience, and it's worth every penny that you pay. That's this the is... thing about that, though. Like, you don't know if it's worth it until you, after you pay it and play it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So and it's always a, it's always a toss up. It is, and this is where, like, for me, I look at, I look at the rental because you're right. I do look at 
money and time and i look at how much for each hour of game that i'm getting how much am i paying so if it's a 10 hour game and it's costing me seven seventy uh, quid then i'm paying seven pound per hour which is ridiculous you get childcare for cheaper than that in some places i mean places you wouldn't want to leave your child but you could you could definitely get it <laughs> um, but yeah the like and and obviously we've got a rental service and this is where like it tosses up between is a game worth 70 pounds because i'm going to get 70 pounds worth of quality fun from it or is it worth renting because i'm going to get that that enjoyment out of it but i'm also going to enjoy the fact that it's the money's not left my wallet and like so like what you're saying if I, you get let's say god of war you get 15 hours or 18 hours or whatever it was of pure perfect gameplay but i can get that for the 12.99 a month rental as opposed to the 70 pounds send it back and know that eventually i'm going to get it on playstation plus or pick it up on the sale if i want to play it again yeah yeah no i, I mean i agree with that and it's like the most logical way of looking at it but um for me i guess i'm kind of like sentimental in a, in a way where it's like i bought um last of us day one i played it i had like this crazy like emotional roller coaster and um picking up picking it up again is just instant for me it's if i have to wait for like a rental queue or anything like that it's just if i want to play it i'm feeling like playing it, i can play it there and then and I, I, yeah i feel like you know you go to a cinema you pay you know x amount of pounds you go to a theme park you pay x amount of pounds and it's kind of in that same ballpark for me personally where you're paying for like the experience that you're gonna have and um, for me like like Last of Us, God of War, Spider-Man, they're all worth that high price point. I mean, they were less high than they are going into next gen. But um, they're definitely, definitely worth it for me, is paying that, that one hit price and just being like, yes, I'm all in. Let's fucking go. But I, I still think that's still related to you've already played these games, so you know to you personally that it's going to be worth it. You know? Yeah, but like games you haven't played yet, I think like with what Shane's saying, I think it's if you're renting it, I think that's great. But if you love it, I think for the out of respect, you should probably buy a copy. That's kind of how I do things because if I really enjoyed it, I feel like they do deserve, they do deserve the the money that I spent. So if it if it was a three hour game, but I had that amazing experience like you're talking about, Mike, I would absolutely pay. The seventy dollars for it. Mm. Um, yeah, but if, like if it's like a you know, um, think of like the best movie you've ever watched, or you know, if, if it's that level of experience, right? Um, then I'd I'd say personally it's worth the money, but I'm stupid with money, so like, so you know, I'll spend like quite a lot a lot of money on games, thinking like you know, I've a great time with this and it'd be worth it, and then. You know, I might spend two quid on a game and be like, yeah, that was that was fun. I had one go on it and it was great. Um, or, you know, I spent 60 quid and I had one go and it was great, you know. But I guess yeah. it depends on the game. I mean, but- I, I I buy games. I spend more money on games and, and than I do anything else. So I'm with you, Mike. I, I just buy stuff because I'm like, <laughs> I will enjoy it. And if I don't, I enjoyed it for a little bit. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I'm not... Um... I've not always, I'm not always particularly good when it comes to money and games. I probably have sunk well over four hundred pounds into Destiny over the years because I've bought every single DLC that's ever come out, <laughs> and some of them at like the. I remember when Destiny Two came out, I bought the ninety pound digital deluxe edition because I'm a fucking moron. But um, I mean, the... when Persona Five comes out on PS Five, I'm going to buy the deluxe version to get another Mona plushie. So I get it. <laughs> Oh, but then are you paying for the game or are you paying for the plushie? Game and plushie, because I'll play it again. Let's but, go another 120 <laughs> hours. But then like $70, $70 you're getting what? It's been the, zero f- days since. F- <laughs> 50 <laughs> dollars on the game. $50 on the game, $20 on the plushie, job done. Feels yep. It feels less damaging on your bank account then. 
if no plushie came through, I'd still buy it. Reasonable. <laughs> what about them? What are your views on following some some like fairly recent, quite horrific news um, from Two K? What are your views on um, games introducing ways of making money that offsets the initial cost? So instead of games being at that seventy pound, then them not going up to a seventy, like being at the fifty or the sixty uh, price point, but having things inside them. So microtransactions is the obvious one because that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, what about in-game advertising? I, I would, would that... if I knew there was in-game advertising. Yeah. Would you prefer it though? Would you prefer to have the lower cost and have the in-game advertising, or pay for the full cost? And not have the in-game advertising. Full cost. Yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably play. But I mean, I mean, does the in-game advertising hinder on the game? Does it so, the it, game at all? The example, uh, the the reason I brought this question up is so Two K recently had a bit of a blunder with their NBA game, in which it's a seventy dollar game as well. So the four, it's a full price game, but when you went to load into uh, each, every time you went to load into a match, the beginning part of the match had an unskippable ad. So essentially the loading screen was an unskippable ad. So the ad they had was for like an Oculus. Um, there was another ad in there for some other Microsoft product, but it was an unskippable ad um, during a point where you're, you should be able to like edit your lines and stuff ready for the game. But instead you were, you were left with this 30 second unskippable ad that you had to watch to before you could move forward in the game so it's behind no. a quote unquote loading screen uh i mean the i don't know if the i can't, i wasn't i'm not 100 percent sure if it did a loading screen and then the ad yeah. or if they built the ad into the loading screen but ultimately it was longer than what the loading screen requ- was required because it was an extended to be to fulfill the full advert yeah yeah um so Street Fighter Five recently came on PS Plus. Um, I thought, yeah, fucking Street Fighter, I'm well in. I'll, you know, I'll load this up, played a few games, and I was like, you know, mid match, there was like loading, and it was going on for like a minute, and it was just an advert, advert for the game that I'd already purchased. It was just an advert for Street Fighter, and it was like, why is this here? But it's an actual visible loading screen advert, and I was just like. Why is there advertising in this game? Like, I know I didn't buy it per se, but um, but it's the same experience for everyone that, that's got the game, whether you bought it or not, or got it through the PS Plus. It's just an advert in a game, and I just instantly just put the put the controller down, uninstalled. You know, it's just I was just turned off that game completely. It's not it's why. A shitty, it's a shitty tactic. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. And I, I mean, I, I would play a game if the ad was like, if they're drinking a a soda, then it's a Coca-Cola bottle or whatever. But if I have to sit through an actual ad that's acting like a loading screen, no. I'm yeah, not. so product placement is different. Product yeah. placement is, I mean, that happens all the time, doesn't it? In films, in yeah. games, yeah. like characters driving an Audi or something, and it's like, oh, Audi are clearly sponsoring this game. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, but it actual physical it adverts necessarily take away from the you know the game or the movie or whatever you know. If just the logo no, it is there or while you're playing exactly. the game, you know, if it interrupts and it's like, here's a here's an advertisement for our sponsors. You know, it's like, right. fuck off, nah, I'm out. I'll just turn the game off mid loading screen. Well, like you know, Hulu, I can, I can have an account in Hulu for less the price for some ads i'm still paying the extra couple of dollars because i just don't want them like i i'd rather i personally would rather play pay full price because i'm not playing again to be playing a game to be sold an item i'm playing a game so that i can immerse myself in something that will completely take me out Mm. of what i'm playing i think immersion yeah i get that thing and especially going forward in in next gen with you know all the haptic feedback talk and um all of that, I think, like immersion and being involved in the game, and um, it's a huge thing. And if there's just an advert that just pops up and be like, blink, you know, 
um, it just it's just like you're playing Last of Us two, and then a fucking Coca Cola advert pops up. It's like right. what? <laughs> What? Yeah. what? What? Like I'm crying. I don't want one. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe okay. maybe that's the prime time for them to advert a box of tissues. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy some Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, I agree. I agree. I, I I would rather just have the full price game than an advert, but because then news article, I thought, oh, I'll throw it in there. Um. So we are getting close to the end, and I just want to wrap up with this last question. Then. So. As we said, prices have gone up. They haven't actually increased massively in line with inflation. In fact, the cost of games, when you look at the last 30 years, have gone down. Games used to be a hell of a lot more expensive than they are now. They dropped significantly um, down into the PlayStation days. And then we didn't see a huge increase until PlayStation 3, um, where it went up to the $50, $60, £60 mark between 50 and 60 we haven't seen an increase since the ps3 so we're looking at around 12 to 14 years since price have gone up now when you consider everything else's price has gone up in the last 12 to 14 years because just, you know just, just a quick note on that um that, that price yep. increase and the, and the drop on the fall and uh, the rise and the fall sorry um i remember buying banjo kazooie on n64 which is a cartridge ass game that went in your console um, I remember buying that for sixty, uh, no, seventy pounds actually. Yeah. Um, and that was that was like back in the day. That was that was you know. Yeah. So late eighties, early nineties. That was ten year old um, Mike. Um, and I remember yeah, buying so... PS One brand new games for twenty quid. So you know. Yeah. So it it that... did fluctuate massively. Yeah. Um, those so those cartridge games back in like the late eighties, early nineties. It was around anywhere between sort of the seventy pound, eighty dollar mark, mm-hmm. and then PlayStation dropped down massively, and it actually went at some places. It went down to like thirty pound that you could buy, pick up a game for. Yeah. Um, and then as I say, you had a slight increase with the PS2, which took it up to more like the forty pound mark, and then PS3 took it up to the the sort of fifty to sixty pound mark. But we hadn't or fifty sixty dollars, but we haven't seen an increase since so 12 to 14 years we haven't seen any sort of increase whatsoever mm-hmm. now considering of say like the cost of everything has gone up the cost of salaries the cost of technology the cost of developing a game has gone up yeah, massively massively exactly you look at a game you look at a game like god of war which uh, is the budget on that must have been huge to make that game mm-hmm. so we all talk obviously like we as we spoke about 70 pounds will sound well it's a bit steep but then there's only certain times i'd expect to pay, to pay that sort of price but i mean it depends on the game Do, and your taste and everything so it's it's very like situational it is but we're always wanting more from our game we're always wanting better graphics yeah. we're always wanting more storyline and longer games better features do we expect too much for the money that they ask are we are our expectations as gamers higher than they should be for what the developers are doing do we give them too much shit because we're like well you know we've paid our 70 quid so you should be giving us this 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 and this that we wanted but actually what they've given us is well within the price range of what they can deliver yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Sarah and Mike? Go on. You yeah, go, you I, go first, Sarah. I, I definitely feel like we're probably putting a lot of pressure on them. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I want to play really good games. So I, I think it's just kind of like a lose-lose situation. We're expecting a lot and they can't deliver. So no one's going to be happy. Mike? Um, yeah, just... Uh, I mean, it depends how you value time and and value thing. Um, it, it, there is that that fucking age old thing of the entitled gamer, and um, you look at Mass Effect, which you talked about, and Mass Effect Three, and how there was a whole uproar about the ending, which personally I thought was fine. You know, whatever. Yeah, I thought it was fine as well. It's it's this like it was the in my opinion, their artistic vision to go the way they went. And, um, 
you know, it was a huge petition to change the ending because like, nobody liked it. And it, uh, I, I hate that, like, mentality of, of, I didn't like it, so it must change. So, you know, it's just, it's that's just how it happens, you know, it's fucking chill. Except, yeah. <laughs> except when they did it with Sonic, because it was acceptable when they did it with Sonic, because that thing was fucking creepy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was monstrous, but so bad. I'd have fucking watched it still. Probably sooner than what I did. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just like this. Yeah, the internet is an overwhelming force, isn't it? And it's it will just be like, this is horrible. You must change it. And then if everyone agrees, then you know, look at mm. um, I, I know we talked about that last week with the um, you know, microtransactions in the games. And then we talked about Battlefront and that being the most uh, downvoted thing on Reddit, and how that was just an avalanche to change like it just you know it's it was like a snowball effect essentially but um i guess i guess it all boils down to like how you value your time and your experience with a game um because for me like i've had games where like siege for example or overwatch where i've paid about 25 quid for those games i think when i bought them like both of them and they're both equally like um similar sort of games in their like uh, financial structure um and i've been like i fucking love this game i i've got no qualms in throwing down an extra 20 quid to get some extra characters that you know developers spent you know probably hundreds of hours developing and changing and, and you know and testing and, and all of this and um you know we've got we've got jedi who's a game designer who, who you know spends hours and hours and hours and he's so hard to pin down for like an episode because he's so busy all the time and um you know if it you know if i bought say jedi's game and i enjoyed it and then I've got no qualms in buying some DLC or some extra content or even, you know, the microtransactions. If I enjoy the game and um, this, is, this just sounded to me like, like I'm approving microtransactions like they're great. But, you know, if you love the game and um, you're invested in it, then, you know, I personally, I've thrown, you know, 20 quid, 30 quid, or, you know, I throw money at games that that don't need you to throw money at them. But I've just been like, I love this game. Um, uh, Overwatch yeah, game I'm... one, where I'll just be like, I love this game. I'll buy some loot boxes because I love this game. I want the money that I've, I think it deserves to go to the you know the developers and and the creators of this this like game that I really enjoy. And if I've got no issues with spending a bit extra money on on a game. Um, you know, as an extra thing, but also saying that I don't think it should be for um, every single game. But I think that's wrong. But it's, you know, depends on the game. But um, Sarah, what were we gonna say? Sorry. No, I was just gonna say that I would also spend money on a game and just throw money at it if I enjoyed it, whether it be microtransactions or extra DLC or just buying extra stuff for a new character or something i and i the only time that it's not okay is if the games are tricking you into it but if yeah. they're like hey you can buy these things but if you don't buy them you're gonna have the same kind of time as you would if you did yeah so i mean my my point on this and we should probably wrap it up because i think we're pushing time now um and this is kind of my last point that I wanted to make, as always. <laughs> uh, and the and the reason I brought up this topic, and it's, it's a bit more of a serious topic than the topics we generally have, that are a little, a little bit more jokey. Um, with this topic, like I, so it's Demon Souls is what brought this topic to my mind, and going into this new generation. So Demon Souls is what ten years, twelve years old, and they've remastered it for the PS5, and it's seventy dollars or seventy pound. And I'm looking at it, and on one hand, my brain is saying, why am I paying £70 for a game that came out 12 years ago? Yes, they've given it a new 
lick of paint and they've upgraded some of the systems, but it's a 12 year old game. But on the other hand, my brain's going, yeah, but they've probably spent years redeveloping, rebuilding, taking a game that was on the PS3, which had an awful architecture and basically building that game again from the ground up. So why, sh- why wouldn't they deserve to be able to sell that at full price? What, what are my expectations of them? On one hand, I'm expecting them to charge me less because it's an old game, but I'm still expecting them to put in the same work as if they were to build a brand new game. And that's kind of where my thought path around this came from. And, it, and it's a difficult one because on one hand, yeah, I don't want to pay £70 for a game that came out a long time ago. But on the other hand, they've put in the work, they've built the game. So actually, they deserve my £70. Yeah, well, so it's, it's a tough it's, one. It's not the same studio that built uh, Demon Souls, is it? It's Blue Point. Is that right? Blue Point, yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, I think they've earned a uh, quite a good reputation in their remasters of being like a new lease of life. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to playing it, but on rental <laughs> because I I didn't want to part with the seventy pound. In yeah, the end, the yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying for that for an old game. Uh, yeah. one over the they deserve my money yeah I th- you know i think we all make a solid point in and it's very sort of uh, specific to the person yeah you know, and, definitely you know we all value our time money and uh you know experience differently i definitely think that's um it could it can't be like pinned down to one definite answer yeah, we're all going to have different different views on it. Yeah, for sure. but um, let's let's say, let's wrap up the episode. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, if you let us know your opinion in the comments. So, please. Yeah, we crave it. We need it. We need it. We love it. We need opinions. Giz, we we literally feed off them. Give your opinions. But yeah, um, if, you, if you enjoyed the episode, made it this far. Then, you know, we put on an episode every Monday, a blog every Friday. You know, you can find us on YouTube, um, Spotify, and all of the other good podcast places. Please hit subscribe and all of that good stuff. And it's just worth noting that we don't ask for any kind of like Patreon rewards or anything like that. No money. We'll exchange hands here, just opinions and positive vibes, I guess. <laughs> opinions positive vibes and good chat yeah good bants right. good bants. Solid bants so any final thoughts um, from all of you shane final thought go the only thing i was gonna tie up with is obviously we had a lot of news this week um and we will ensure that links to the articles i read from are included in our show notes for everybody to to check out those articles themselves um obviously ign have, have put some hard work into reviewing these consoles themselves. I don't want to take any of their hard work away from them. Yep. Sarah. That's it for me. Final thoughts. I I always just love talking to you guys and (laughs) listening to the podcast. And thank you everyone that is also listening. And I can't wait to be back. Yep. Yes. Um, For me, it's just, yeah. Thanks for listening. If you made it as far, that's awesome. Uh, we'll uh, catch you next time. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Ripple up speed.